Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined now by Kyle Larson, driver of the number 42 DC Solar Chevrolet. Uh, Kyle, you won the pole at last year's Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series race here at Sonoma and the K&N West Series race here in 2014. Uh, how are you feeling heading into this weekend's race in your home state? Yeah, well, the stats, I feel good about qualifying. Um, I always qualify good here. I think we have the track record maybe from uh, 14 or 15. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then, you know, the pole here last year was, was neat. I'd like to race good here um, soon. I don't know what it is about the race, but I always seem to struggle a little bit. So, you know, hopefully this year is a little bit different and um, can do a good job and, and get, our, get our team up front. All right, we're going to open it up for questions. We'll come up to Mike in the front. I can't bring USA Today. So are you incredibly sad or are you exhilarated about NASCAR's decision on the rules package? Or somewhere in between? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm happy that it's not, um, I guess, happening this year. You know, I feel like we're a ways into the season. Um, so, you know, I think them kind of taking their time uh, to evaluate a little bit more and, and maybe you know, figure out ways to make it even better is good. So. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I just kind of learned about it, I guess, I don't know, pretty much yesterday or today. Um, so yeah, it's, it's nice that uh, we can focus on what we've been working on all year long. Um, like I've said before, I thought it was a great uh, all-star package. Um, and I, I think there's ways to make it better for, uh, for other racetracks if they wanted to. So I think with them taking their time, it's good to uh, you know, hopefully um, hit a home run with it someday. Next, we're going to go on the left to Jeff. Jeff Gluck from jeffgluck.com. I was reading through your Twitter Q&A this week, and it seemed like you drew the ire of some NASCAR fans who are a little bit sensitive when you mentioned World of Outlaws again or dirt racing. Um, even though you said you wouldn't, you just wanted to go there one like 15 years from now, basically. Um, what What are you having trouble getting across to them, I guess, as far as your caring for NASCAR and dirt racing, why do you think people are so sensitive to the fact that you mentioned that? Um, I don't know. I think maybe some people aren't quite as open-minded, maybe. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, <laughs> it's like they read it as if I said in two years from now I, I wanted to do it. But, I mean, 15 years from now, that would be 20 years in Cup. So that's a long time. I, you know, I think Jeff Gordon spent about that much time in, in the sport. But uh, I don't know. I mean... It's not, I don't know, I, maybe I don't do the, the best job in the world of talking about how much I love NASCAR as much as I do sprint cars, but I do. You know, I wouldn't be here if I didn't love NASCAR racing. Um, you know, I enjoy, I enjoy sprint cars, and, and I've, I feel like, um, you know, I, I talk about sprint cars a lot just to open people's eyes to that style of racing because um, it's, it's a great form of racing, and so is NASCAR. Um, so... I, I don't know. I think I just want fans to be fans of motorsports, not just NASCAR and not just sprint cars. I kind of I I'd like to see everybody just enjoy all of racing. And, and I think that's what I do. Maybe I don't do a good job at it sometimes. Um, but, you know, I, I enjoy racing all types of vehicles. And um, yeah, so I, I don't know. You know, some fans, most fans get it, but some fans aren't, aren't quite open minded enough. Next, we're going to go to Bob. Bob Parker, CSPN. I wanted to follow up on that. Uh, did Chip have any reaction or anything to if you saying that uh, by the time you're 40, you're, you won't uh, be racing yet. cup? <laughs> no, not yet. I'll see him this weekend. I'm sure he'll give me some crap about it, but um, I think he's good enough at math to know that that's a long time from now. <laughs> Kyle, you're currently 10th uh, in the points right now. Halfway, pretty well halfway through the season. Is it frustrating? You're the top-ranked Chevy. You're tenth in the points. What does the rest of the season look like? No, I mean it's. I don't know. I, I'd obviously like to be higher in points. I don't think of it as anything as. I've never. Yeah, I, I don't think of me being the highest-running Chevy. Um, yeah, I, I look at. I think we've had a few DNFs this year. Um, so you know, we we aren't a tenth-place car. Uh, we're we're quite a bit faster than that. So. Um, yeah, I think it's been a good year. It hasn't been a, a great year. It hasn't been the year we had last year, but um, we still have been really competitive. Uh, I've ran second three times, um, close to winning a, a couple of those. So 
um, we have speed. We just um, need to, or I, you know, execute a little bit better. And, and these races are tough to win, so you have to be extremely perfect uh, to to win them. So I think you know we just keep keep working to be a little bit better, uh, at, you know, all around, and and we'll be contenders at the right time of the season. And I think last year we, um, you know, we were good to start the year, and we, not that we didn't get worse, we just didn't get a ton better throughout the year where other teams were getting better. But I feel like we're in that spot this year now where we are getting better and better uh, every week. So um, I think hopefully that we can you know, hit it at the right time and be a, you know battling for the championship at Homestead. We'll go to the back with Fox. Hey, Kyle, there's been a lot of talk uh, this year about declining TV ratings for NASCAR as well as attendance at the tracks. Do you notice that as well, or you know, do you think that the the fan support, is, you know, just as enthusiastic as it always has been? Yeah, I mean, it's hard not to notice uh, you know, the empty seats, I guess, in the stands. But I think you could. It's it's not just NASCAR. You can look at any any sporting event, um, you know, basketball, even football, sometimes and. Uh, other sports, you know, I think during the regular season, uh, there's just so many other ways to consume the um, the event on your phone or whatever it may be. You know, you don't have to be here live to, to be watching it. Uh, you don't even have to be watching on TV to be paying attention to the race or, or to a sporting event. So I think that's why. Um, and I think I think the way that that some some people might look at ratings, it might look worse than it really is. So I, I don't think we're at a bad spot. I and mean, I think NASCAR is always trying to figure out ways, NASCAR and the tracks are always trying to figure out ways to get more fans back to the racetrack. And um, I don't pay attention to a whole lot of other sports, but uh, I, don't, I don't feel like they, uh, that other sports are working as hard as, as what NASCAR does um, to, to grow their fan base. Next we'll go to Lee. Kyle, can you express to the General Motorsports fan that um, a successful grassroots program, whether it's what you do, Bell does, across the board is good for all motor motorsports? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think I think you can look at what um, what myself and Bell and Casey Kane, Stenhouse, Tony Stewart, Kevin Harvick's been a big advocate of it uh, the last year or so of, of growing grassroots racing because um, it is you know huge for motorsports in general and, and helping to grow motorsports and um, getting these fans paying attention to their local racetracks. So um, I don't know. I don't really know how I can explain it to people, but um, I enjoy doing it. Um, I don't I don't feel obligated to go race that stuff to to make it make motorsports bigger, but I know when I'm doing it that I am doing something positive for racing. So uh, that gives me some extra enjoyment out of it. Um, I love going to the racetrack and, and you know hearing to the dirt to the dirt track um, and hearing. I have multiple fans come up to me each and every night. They're like, "Man, you know you and guys like you and Bell, you're the reason why I'm watching NASCAR again." And and that makes me feel really special. So. Uh, makes like makes me feel like I'm I'm having an impact when I am going to race that stuff, or or racing here even. So, um, yeah, I think uh, I think you've seen a, a huge push to help grow grassroots racing, and I think Harvick here recently has been a, a big uh, promoter of that. So, um, we'll just keep you know having fun and doing what we're doing, and and trying to do our best to grow it. Next, we'll go to MRN. Woody came with MRN. Kyle, next week you head to Chicago. How odd will it feel with that not being the first playoff race for the first time in a long time? And how differently do you think it might race in July versus the fall when you've been racing there? Yeah, it will be a little odd. I, I feel like going to Chicago um, then, but I think it's a good a good change. Um, you know, I think the hotter weather will always make any race better, you know, because we'll be sliding around and stuff like that. I think um, they'll probably be I would I would hope there'd be a lot more fans and stuff at the racetrack because, you know, there's really no other sporting events going on or major sporting events, um, and and you know kids are out of school, so I think that'll be big. Um, and and as far as the style of racing, like I said, the track should hopefully be hotter and slicker. Um, but then I always feel like that first playoff race of the, of the you know playoffs, um, the intensity is not that high just because um, 
you know, people are just trying not to make mistakes and stuff like that, or, or you don't really want to start off your playoffs bad. So everybody races. I feel like there's a lot of give and take of that race where now, you know, not saying that there's not as much on the line, but I think the racing will be more intense even than it was. Come up front to Greg. On a real basic level, how much fun or not fun is a road course for a NASCAR driver? You get so few opportunities to show off these this aspect of your skills. Uh, I, th I think it's a lot of fun. Um, it's it's fun to get to do something different, totally different than what I ever grew up racing. You know, a pavement oval is totally different than what I grew up doing, but a uh, road course is, is way opposite. So um, I enjoy it. I feel like I get better and better at it. To me, I feel like racing a stock car on a road course is more similar to a, a sprint car even, you know, because you can feel the suspension working more than you can on an oval. Um, so there's there's aspects of it that, that you know, my background benefits to to this more so than uh, a normal oval race. So I enjoy it. This is my home track, so I get to see a lot of friends and, and family and, and uh, you know, hang out with people that I don't get to see very often too. So I enjoy I enjoy this weekend a lot. Next we'll go to a gentleman in the back. Uh, Mark Garrow, PRN. Kyle, with the new Camaro body, uh, are you optimistic that you guys still have a ways to go in developing it so that you've got a lot of good news ahead of you, you know, in the sense that this car should be getting faster, or are you guys a little frustrated you haven't found the speed in the car yet or as much as you would like? Well, I mean, I feel like our speed has been there um, all year, really. Um, yeah, I feel like speed-wise, we've been about the same as we were last year. Uh, I think other. I think you can look at Stuart Haas is quite a bit better than they were last year. I feel like compared to the Gibbs cars, we're kind of right where we were to end the season with them last year. Um, so we were pretty good there. So no, I mean I don't. I don't feel like our team is frustrated at all. I think we look at it as there's a lot of room to gain, um, which is which is nice because I feel like we're already competitive, and if we get any bit better, you know, we'll be in a good spot. So. Um, I think our team is definitely optimistic. Do we have any questions upstairs? Does anyone have any questions? No questions. Thank you. We'll go to the second row right here. Donna Beth Wildman, Benicia Harold, Martinez News Gazette. Um, I would like to ask you what part, what elements of this track do you really find challenging, intriguing, and really uh, work with the skills that you do bring? Uh, I would say the the areas that I struggle the most at, you know, I, I or the areas that I'm I'm good, starting with the, you know, just start through the lap, uh, you know, turn one up through the hill, all the way basically to turn four, I'm I'm really good. Uh, off of turn four, I struggle. Seven, I struggle. Eleven, I struggle. Clint's trying to teach me a little throttle control back there. That's <laughs> where I lack. Um, and then the S's, I'm I'm decent at, and then. Uh, Turn 11, I, I kind of suck again. So um, any any corner where you have to slow down and speed back up, uh, I, I tend to struggle at. So i got to get better at that. We're going to take one more question down here. Anybody? We good? Bob, last question. Does the rain out Wednesday count against your 25, and do you get to do the Indy uh, dirt race? <laughs> uh, I, I hope it doesn't count, or I hope... I hope um, the rain out allows me to, that's the first time I've had to deal with that, you know, getting rained out before the feature of where I've already been in the race car. But I don't think it counts, so um, that's good. Uh, I already had the Indy race on my schedule, so um, now it opens me up to kind of go somewhere else, which is nice. All right. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you. All right, we are joined now by Clint Boyer, driver of the number 14 One Cure Ford. Uh, Clint, historically, you've been very successful here at Sonoma, including a win in 2012, and you're coming off a win in Michigan. What's your strategy this weekend to make it two in a row? Uh, just, you know, get settled in, get comfortable in the racetrack, get your car comfortable. That's the biggest thing. Um, you know, you heard Kyle talking about all the challenges of this racetrack, and it presents all of them. You know, the forward bite issues, uh, you have a high-speed section, so you got to have uh, you know, good aero grip uh, over there in the high speed section. You got to be, it's very technical up on the hill and stuff like that. You just, it's a, 
it's a short track of road racing and, and who am I to say that I, I'm not a road racer and don't really know, haven't really been on anything other than these two that we, we race on. But, uh, um, it's just always felt like you was at a little bull ring short track somewhere in the Midwest on a half mile. And it just, just happens to be, you go right and shift gears all at the same time. Open it up for questions. We'll start with Mike. Mike Kimber, USA Today. You're one of <clears throat> one of four guys now with multiple wins. Uh, only six guys have won races this year. You, you feel like you're sort of part of the in crowd now, looking at the second half of the season? Well, I'm certainly with the in, uh, you know, organization right now with Stuart Haas Racing and, and uh, you know, Ford and um, the job that Doug Gates and all his crew is doing on those engines. I mean, it's just a lethal package right now. It's it's. <laughs> This is a humbling sport, man. I've been all over the place in it, and uh, I've been high and low and, and everywhere in between, and um, just makes you appreciate the ride you're on right now and, and the group that I'm around, and we're hitting on all eight cylinders. We're getting the most out of our weekends and, and um, you know, finally starting to get that consistency back that I talked about, you know, that we were lacking last year. So um, the capability, you know, is, is there with the, within the team. Um, it was a team effort at, at Michigan, and... And uh, it'll take a team effort this weekend to conquer this racetrack and, and the competition on it. Uh, just a fun weekend, though, you know, focusing on this weekend, thinking about this weekend and an off, off weekend like we had. Um, you just can't – doesn't matter what you're doing. You know, I was sitting over at the lake watching the kids swim, and I'm thinking – about turn seven, you know, and, and putting a throttle down and, and uh, who's going to dive bomb you and piss you off in 11 or, or what you're going to do to them, uh, you know, or who's going to be in your mirror, how you're going to navigate turn, you know, uh, four and, and all the, you know, challenges of this racetrack. I mean, you just, you kind of catch yourself daydreaming, um, you know, of the lines on the racetrack and then, uh, you know, all the experiences you've had on the racetrack, maybe on and off of it. Thanks. We'll go to PRN in the back. Mark Carroll, PRN. Clint, you always have a good time at the racetrack, even when things aren't going so well. How much more fun? <laughs> how much more fun is it now when things are going well? It's a lot of fun. I mean, you know, everybody's. I think it's well documented. You guys do a great job covering our sport, and I mean, you can see, um, you know, the the uh, the happiness and and, and uh, the fun that's that's uh, you know within our group right now. I mean, it's just it is. It's a ton of fun to be able to win at uh, this level of auto racing is is a dream come true to be able to compete at this level and then once you're you're sitting in victory lane and you've beat the best of the best there's just no feeling like it there isn't um to be able to share that with the you know the men and women that that uh, are behind you in these race cars at Stuart Haas Racing and Victory Lane is just there's absolutely no gratification like that next we'll go to Mike Torch but Clint, running well and winning here is so different from anything else how did you come to embrace road racing? You know, I think you embrace this track and road racing in general um, just like you do Martinsville. Nobody shows up at Martinsville and goes to the top of the board and is fast and has success and navigates traffic and wins that race right off the bat. It just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen here either. It's an acquired taste just like the wine right down the street. Um, I'm telling you, it is. This place is a beast. And uh, so is that wine the first time you try it. Like, damn, I don't know about all this. The next thing you know, you're, you know, getting a little longer in the tooth. And, and uh, um, you're like, hey, let's go get some wine. You know, so it, it is. This racetrack is so much like, um, you know, pulling into one of them vineyards as you go through life and everything else. But it's just, it's a ton of fun. You've got to be able to have fun on this racetrack. It's, it's a challenge. Um, each and every corner is different. There is, there is no perfect setup. There is no perfect, um, line. You know, you'll, you'll literally one of the only tracks you go to where you're out there racing and you'll have a smile on your face. You might get a chuckle, you know, maybe you'll go into the corner and slip up and, and, you know, be pissed because the guy behind you that you spent three laps passing got back around you and maybe the next corner he drives off the track and you're like, ah! you know, I mean that. <laughs> That is that quick chuckle that I'm talking about that only, you know, road racing or something like Sonoma can present. Next, we'll go to Fox. Hey, Clint, I think I got a pretty good judge of, of your enthusiasm for the sport, but some have suggested that this year or in past years, maybe the fan base has dwindled off. Do, do you feel that? Do you, what, do you, what is your, your take on it? You know, every track's different. Every area is different. Um, we're all in this together. You know, I think the product is, is, uh, 
is as good as it's ever been. I mean, it, that's not an argument. That's stats. That's that's facts. Um, that the racing is better than it's ever been. Um, you know, our, our tracks, they put on a show. They put on a party. They put on an event. And it's not just those race cars on the racetrack that are part of that event. You have to be able to to entertain the people, our fans, um, all weekend long. If you're going to invite them to the racetrack, you've got to be able to put on a show and have them come back to their families, to their friends with memories and moments that they remember. And, and that doesn't just entail those race cars being on the racetrack. And sometimes I think we make a mistake of just focusing on that. When I go to a football game, I go to Chiefs games in the wintertime. Can't wait to go back. Can't wait to tailgate at Arrowhead. It's the best damn time I've ever had with my buddies. We go and, and let our hair down and have fun. And, and uh, believe it or not, I've left there and went, hey, who won? <laughs> it's an event. It's not just a football game. You're there for the football. You're there for the racing. But you're there for a good time. Next, we'll go to MRN. Woody came with MRN, Clint. Next week you head to Chicago. Will it feel strange that not being a, the playoff opener? And how different do you think that track will be in July versus the fall? It certainly is. We were, uh, yeah, I was trying to figure out. My f buddy at the lake was asking, when are you going to come back? I'm like, man, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. My wife was like, after Chicago, I think, you know, before t July 4th. I'm like, do what? <laughs> No, no. So I was all messed up on my schedule. And, and uh, um, Chicago has always been a cool racetrack. It's a sister track to my home track in Kansas. And the fan base up there is that Midwestern fan base that, that uh, you know, I feel most comfortable with and enjoy um, you know, going to that racetrack and interacting with them in the infields and everything else. It's, again, well, as you go through, we're fortunate enough to be able to race all over the country and see different people and different ways of life and what works in – Chicago may not work in in Sonoma, you know what works in Sonoma. They don't drink wine in Chicago, very not at the racetrack. It's Bush Light. Um, you come out here and you're gonna have people drinking vino out there, you know, and watching a good race. I mean, that's what's cool about being able to race all over the country. Next, we'll come back up to Mike. NASCAR's decision on the All Star package to hold off to next year. This good is Bob's question. I mean, come well, on. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I beat him to it. We were doing uh, so well. <laughs> good, good idea or bad? I don't need It's their idea, you know, and their decision, and, and they do a great job. Man, there's so much going on in this sport, and, and we looked at that and tried it in the all-star race. That's a great format to be able to do that. Showed promise, you know what I mean? But there's still more to learn in that and, and everything else. So, um they obviously I heard it just like you I was off this weekend just like you were and probably read it on Twitter just like you did and start calling the boys at home but I mean it's it's uh I I appreciate that we tried that appreciate that it showed some promise for our future and um also appreciate that that what we have right now is just fine to be able to go for a championship and and uh you know hopefully be a part of that with the 14 car go to the second row uh, Clint, you, you often hear Sonoma talked about as a very technical course, especially in comparison to Watkins Glen. And I'm just wondering, in layman's terms, w what does that mean to you? What makes this so technical? Well, just Watkins Glen is so fast. It's, I mean, just dive bombs, and, and you're really, really carrying a lot of speed at, at a place like Watkins Glen. Here, it's like that short track. It's like being at Martinsville. You know, you beat the, Did you see my car at the end of the year last year? Or at the end of the race, I mean, it was destroyed and uh, drove up through them. I think, you know, passed the field twice because of, you know, mistakes that we made and, and uh, got spun out once. I mean, it was a wild race to be able to finish second in that. You can't do that at Watkins Glen. That car would not have ran in the top 10 at Watkins Glen. Um, you know, breaking, getting into these corners at 11, you're sitting here looking at it. I mean, I know when I get in this car just a little bit, you've got to be on your game over there. You go through that little swell right there, and a the car unloads, and once they get light, it's really easy to uh, wheel hop. Then you've got to be able to get it woed down to get on the bottom down there, um, you know, and get that thing launched off the corner, up through the gears, up on the hill, blind corners. I mean, there's just this track has way more – um, than other tracks. I mean, you know, Watkins Glen, you go up through that hill, but you, you can see the other side. You know, you pop the crest of the hill up there and, and come back down. It, um, I mean, you're like, I think I'm good. I think I'm not good. I'm in the dirt. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's just one of those tracks that's, 
you've got to be on your game, and, and uh, it's very, very technical. And, and the minute you're not, you're off the racetrack and in trouble. Next, we'll go to Lee. Have you been on the Charlotte Road course, and do you have any expectations of, you know, from seeing what other people have said, what to expect? I, I haven't been on it. I, have, I haven't even watched a lap around it. I don't even know what the track looks like, to be honest with you. I know it's at Charlotte Motor Speedway, and, and I'm looking forward to getting there. But, you know, this racetrack that's ahead of us right now is, is, is the one. This is the one that we're here to put a show on for. The fans come out, the traffic, everything is, is – this is an event. You know what I mean? This is this is the event that, that we all need to, to take a look at and because it showcases – the best racing on the racetrack that, that NASCAR, you know, that we can possibly provide. And then you look around in the grandstands or you look over on the back straightaway. I mean, people are having a good time and they're enjoying this event. It's not just a race. And, and were you down at Lake Louis yesterday? Yeah. Okay. Was it the same after you left? No. <laughs> I wasn't. I can promise you that. Do we have any questions upstairs? Uh, Clint, Justin Schuler with Speedway Media. Um, this is the first time uh, since 31 years NASCAR's had three road courses in the schedule, and now this year uh, with the Roval coming up. Uh, what's your thoughts with the direction of adding some more road course races in the schedule? Yeah, I think it's a good product um, for our sport. I think, you know, ever since we went to that car tomorrow, it's been great road racing. Uh, I can say you can almost pinpoint that is, is when we went to that and started coming out here, it's like, oh, this is this was awesome. And then it's just always provided that. Um, I don't know where the hell to look at. Where is he? Up, did I look at that camera? <laughs> so, uh, um, you know, I think it just it provides a, a good product on the racetrack. Uh, you know, these road courses, Watkins Glen, another packed house. Um, you know, sold out crowds and, and my wife's from up there. I mean, I know because I know the people around there and I've met them, the impact that that race and that event makes on, on that uh, area. Guy Fietti was over there at his house last night. He's coming to camp out with his buddies. I mean, he, you know, you feel and know um, the excitement and the buzz, you know, in this area because of, the, of us rolling into town with this sport. I think we could do that at at a Road America or a Road Atlanta and things like that. I want to be careful just because you got a road course in the middle of your circle track. I don't think we need to be doing those. I, I'd, like to, I'd like to see our sport going to some other venues and, and uh, racing in front of some new faces. Any other questions upstairs? No more questions. Second row, last question down here. Donna Beth Wildman, Martinez News Gazette, Benicia Herald. Um, when I first talked to you about the new format at the time with the stages, your focus was on winning. Now what do you think, now that you've got a, a little bit of this under your belt, what do you think of the stage racing? It's good. Yeah. The fastest cars get all the stage points and win the races. They, it's just that way. So, you know what I mean? Has it created some buzz and excitement throughout the race? Absolutely. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, you know, if, if you're sitting at the craps table and you're betting on, on the fastest car, probably getting the most stage points and winning the race, that your odds are pretty damn good. Um, it's, that's racing. It's been that way since I was five years old, racing motorcycles. If the, the little red-headed kid from Florida would show up, he was the guy you had to beat, and most people couldn't beat him. Thank you, Clint.